Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Melissa. I am the owner and artist here at the Top Drawer RVA and I'm also a Dixie Belle brand ambassador. For today's project, we're going to work on this little dirty neglected cabinet that I've had in my shed for way too long. As always, begin every project with a really good clean with white lightning. White lightning is going to declaw the surface and make sure that no dirt and debris are left over. Since this project is a shiny laminate, I am going to be using my foam and dandy as well as my foam rollers to apply Bonding Boss. Bonding Boss is your gripping adhesive paint and primer for anything that you need to do to get your paint to stick. And the reason why I use that little foam and dandy brush as well as my foam roller is to safely dispose of the roller and brush in the trash when I am finished. You do not want to wash your Bonding Boss down the drain. After applying two even coats, you need to wait 24 hours before you begin to paint. I then came in with this beautiful color called Everglades. This is from the Silk Alma Mineral line. It's a beautiful, rich color. I painted on two even coats inside this cabinet as well as the shelf that will be centered in the middle. Well, hello, hello, Dixie Bell Paint fans. How are you today? It is Melissa from the Top Drawer RVA coming to you live because it's Wednesday and I'm live here every Wednesday at 3 p.m. to sit on the floor, hang out, and play with some paint. So welcome, welcome. If you are new, joining me for the first time, drop in the comments below. I want to know where you're watching from. Let me know how you're doing. I am in uh, Richmond, Virginia, and the pollen outside is starting to get itchy scratchy. It's very polleny outside, so I'm definitely feeling the effects of some uh, itchy eyes today, but I will live. You've got to love the pollen in the south. It makes a giant snow of yellow on everything. I mean, it looks beautiful. Everything's blossoming. Happy spring, but hello, itchy allergy eyes. <laughs> so it is what it is. Anyways, let me know where you're watching from. I'd love to hear. And as always, I do a lot of talking and I don't do a lot of reading the comments. If you have questions or comments, you're more than welcome to drop them in below and I will come back and get them afterwards. So what are we doing today? Got a new project. New project alert. New project alert. Okay, so this little cabinet, no joke, has been in my shed for like four years. Four years. Now, the first reason it lived in the shed for so long, because I mean, it's a cute size. I can pick it up, I can move it, I can do all the things. It's missing glass. <laughs> There's no glass panels in this spot. So to me, I was like, oh, I gotta cut wood, I've gotta find something. But I was really lucky and my good old dad was visiting a couple weeks ago and he was in the shed looking for projects because you know dads like projects. And I said, dad, you want a project? Do this, find something that will fit inside this door because there's like, there used to be pegs to hold something in there, but they were all broken. So he took some MDF board and he cut it to fit. So now I have two panels that will, once I nail gun them in, fit entirely flush to the door. So cute, right? Super cute. So I prepped this entire piece with Bonding Boss in white. What is Bonding Boss, you ask? Bonding Boss is my gripping primer for anything slick or shiny. And this is just a cheap little laminate cabinet. It's nothing fancy, but we're going to make it fancy today. I did paint the interior of this cabinet in a beautiful green called Everglades. You can see it kind of peeking out over here. But I thought today we could do something with these panels. Did you know that Dixie Bell has released some brand new products? There are some new products available from Dixie Bell under Bells and Whistles. You can check them out online. You can check them out with your local retailer. And I have a paper called Blushing Roses over here. All right. You want to see what Blushing Roses is? Because it's super pretty. Check this out. So the reason I picked that beautiful Everglades on the inside was to match this gorgeous paper. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? This is perfect. It's already actually cut. So if you have drawers, this can go over the top of drawers. You can actually put it together and take out those white lines. My thought was to use this brand new Blushing Roses paper and we could decoupage some paper onto this piece of wood. I have two of them. <laughs> Two pieces of wood. So here's my thought. Each panel covered in this beautiful paper, okay, let's pretend, behind this gorgeous door, right? This is like a, a little cabinet. You can see how the, the wood would sit behind. So when you look at this cabinet, you would see these beautiful roses. So I thought we could do a little bit of decoupage today and then we'll paint the sides of this cabinet because I'm in one of those moods where I'm like, I don't really know what I want to do to it because I know I want pink, I know I want green, I know I want a little bit of that beautiful color from this paper on here. So let's do it, let's jump in. So what do you need to decoupage? Well, 
There's many, many ways to do decoupage, okay? Let's see if I have enough room. I probably should have had more room on the, on the floor before I got started. There's many ways to do decoupage, but today's going to be the easy way that I know how to do it best for me. Um, and that involves a top coat and saran wrap or plastic wrap to push it down. So see how this is a nice light color and this is just the bonding boss. The reason I didn't paint it was because the paper is gonna sit on top. And if the paper has color in it and it's light, this is a rice paper, I don't want to um, lose this beautiful color. So by choosing to do white underneath, you're gonna really see this paper pop. So let's aim you down a little bit more. Can you actually see down here? How are we doing, y'all good? Let's cut some of this to um, make some magic happen. I'm gonna move some stuff out of the way so I don't make a giant mess. We only want like a little baby style mess. Let's lay this out and decide which part of the panel we want to use. So I do want the flower. I kind of don't want to waste this paper. Like I was feeling like I could fit two panels really close, but it's just like a little bit too off on the sides, if that makes sense. I know that when it goes in the door, there's, there's the, a quarter inch on either side all the way around. So I technically could probably get away with it, but I'm going to use two sheets of this. Um, or I could even go this way and cut it on the line and apply it, but let's, let's just keep it simple. Let's go this way. So I'm going to put my paper down and I'm just going to cut around it. Because this is going to be able to be sanded around the edges, I'm not going to have to worry about um, really keeping any clean lines. I can just cut the piece that I want, apply it onto my board, and then when it's dry, use sandpaper to take it off, if that makes sense. All right, so there's one. Let's just start with one. So we have my panel that's gonna fit inside that door up at the top, okay? And it's white. There's all those broken pieces that were on the interior of the, the door. And then this would go right over top. So when this goes on and it's on there and it's beautiful, it will sit inside this window up here. So let's do one of these together, at least one, and then start on some paint and use this as my color inspo. All right, so what do I do first? Well, you're gonna to wanna to grab a clear coat. This one just happens to be my Terra Tough because why, you ask? Why, Melissa, are you using Terra Tough? Because I couldn't find anything else. I was um, kind of trying to rush around here and get everything ready for our video today. So what we're gonna do is take the Terra Tough, take the board, and I'm going to use a brush. I'm going to apply my Terra Tough, but I also need a water bottle. Where's my water bottle? Let's see if I can do this without a water bottle. No, I'm gonna want a water bottle when we paint. So, two seconds. Let me reach over here and see where it went. Is it under the paper? Is it hiding? Is it under this board? <laughs> it's like the never ending game of where's all of my products hiding? I know I have a water bottle here somewhere. I just have to find one. Let's see. And of course, here's one, but it's empty. All right, we'll do it without the water bottle because I don't know where it is. So, c'est la vie. Let's power through. So we have our board, okay? And I'm gonna grab my top coat and I'm gonna grab my brush. And all I'm gonna do is make sure to cover this entire board with the clear coat. Like I said, it doesn't matter which one you use. This just happens to be Terra Tough. You can use clear coat satin, you can use clear coat flat. You can even use Gator Hide, it's up to you. So I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna go over top of the entire piece. And then what I normally would do is spray the back of this paper, but I don't have a lot of water here, so let's see if there's any water left. Why do I spray the back of the paper? Well, it kind of gives it a little bit of a, a pull, if that makes sense. It makes it a little bit stretchy, right? So then when you take your paper and you lay it down on top of the surface, I'm then going to be able to pick it up and move it around a little bit easier, right? That's what using a spray misting bottle with water does. It allows you to put the paper down and really kind of move it around and get it exactly where you want it to go. Then I like to take a piece of plastic wrap and I'm just gonna take this plastic wrap, I can't do it holding the board, and I'm going to push out the wrinkles. This isn't hard to do, I'm just gently pushing the wrinkles out and pushing that paper down onto the board. So what it's doing is it's grabbing the clear coat that's underneath and by using the, this little piece of saran wrap or moving wrap, that's what this is from. This is from the big pile of stuff that I use to move my furniture around and wrap it up nice and safe. 
I'm just gonna push out all of those wrinkles and adhere the paper to the edge. If you feel like you missed a little bit, you can pick it up, go back down. So doing it this way allows me to get a wrinkle-free, smoother style of finish without having to worry about tearing my paper. This is rice paper, FYI. So this new Blushing Roses, it's a little bit thicker than normal. Okay, so now you can see how the paper is on there. I see one more little wrinkle that I wanna push out. And I am happy with that. Look, see, that's on there. Isn't it cute? So cute, so cute. Okay, so now I'm gonna aim you up. Let's see if I can do this without falling on my Buttinsky. We're going to aim you up and I'm going to show you my idea for these panels and how this project's going to look. So now we have these empty doors. Once this dries, I can come and add another coat of clear coat to protect it. And then I can also sand back these edges. So let's pretend that this is going to sit up here and be in the windows. Isn't that going to be beautiful? It's going to be so nice. It's such a pretty way. Actually, I'll pick it up and fix that one little wrinkle. Let me move that one little wrinkle. I just want to put down a little bit more clear coat and push it out. Easy peasy. Where's my, where's my plastic wrap? There it goes. So now I'm going to use this as like my color palette because I've got that beautiful Everglades in the middle, right? You can see the Everglades. You can see how this is going to sit inside the windows and I'll do another one on that side as well. I think it's going to be really cute kind of country, a little more country than I am uh, used to, to be honest, but let's junk it up with some paint and make it really pretty. Okay, perfection. First things first, let's put the lid on the tear tough and move it far out of the way before we have an accident, eh? And we will get painting. Hi guys, thanks for joining me. Okay, so this is my color palette. Now see, I touched that, I'm gonna fix that. My hand's stuck to the paper. Um, this is my color palette. On the floor, I have a bunch of colors that are very similar to this paper. And if you're joining me late, this is a brand new paper coming in hot from Dixie Belle. Brand new, just dropped today, I believe, online, called Blushing Roses. I had the paper. Oh, here it is. <laughs> I have the paper here somewhere. Blushing Roses is a premium decoupage paper, quite large in size, with three different panels to um, add to whatever your projects, whatever you might like. All right? So let's add some color. Let's turn this guy around. Should we paint drawers first until we get an idea? Let's paint drawers first today. Let's start on the front for a change. Just for a change, just to mix things up. Let's paint on the front and decide what we're gonna do. Okay, so what colors do I have on the floor? Well, today I grabbed majority of my kind of French tip, not really smooth. I kind of want like a textured finish. So these brushes are natural fiber brushes. They're gonna allow me to stipple the paint on. All right, so I grabbed some Terra. And I really, really, really wish I had more water. Oh, look, I see it. See, this is what happens when you clean up. You put things away and then you can't find them. I should just stay a hot mess all the time and it would do much better. So you're gonna have water and I have my Terra. This color is called wheat. It's like a yellowy color and it's gonna go very well with this kind of color combination. I also grabbed Tea Rose, which is a beautiful kind of, kind of a pinkish gray. I did grab a white Shocker. I did grab white because I want to not keep it too, too pink. And all of these are my like well-loved paint cans. These are not my fresh and tidy cans. These are my messy, give me texture cans. And then I have like the wild cards on the floor. So I still have the Everglades. I have the white, which is Terra in the Moonbeam, which is gonna give me that little texture a little bit more. I do want to add a little bit of this Everglades into the edges, just because that paper has a little bit of that Really pretty green in it, not a lot, but let's get started. I also grab some cobblestone. So as I use each color, I will tell you what I'm doing. I also have rags on the floor. I swear I was prepared, it's just chaos. Chaos. Let's get started. All right, so this is going to require stippling on my paint versus like painting in a smooth fashion. I'm gonna start with Terra. And I also have a heat gun because in case I, I wanna build up those layers, I can heat gun it and make it get dry a little bit faster. So we're gonna start down here and we're gonna start with terra clay paint. Terra clay paint is a textured paint that I like to stipple on in this manner. It creates texture where there was no texture before. It is low VOCs. 
and it is thicker than chalk mineral paint. When I use this paint, this is the paint that I use when I like texture, all right? Texture and design on my pieces. So it says that it's white, but if you actually look at it really close, like it's a, it's a beautiful moonbeam, but if you look at it really close to the color which is on here, which is a, a really white bonding boss, it does have a little bit of cream to it. I'm gonna paint with my drawers in, and I know I'm gonna get a lot of questions. Why? Why do you paint with your drawers in? Well, these drawers do not come out. <laughs> They don't come out, so don't judge. That's the way they're gonna stay. So I'm gonna keep the same brush with my moonbeam. And I'm going to grab a little bit of that wheat, which is like, it's not real yellow. It's more like a creamy kind of a yellow. Let's start to dab on our colors and see what kind of mix we can get. I definitely wanna go a little bit darker around the edges. And I just wanna play with my paint today. It's a play with your paint, kind of a fun day. So we've got so far Moonbeam, which is white. We grab the wheat. And I think I might even dab into some of this cobblestone just to see what it looks like, if it's too dark or not. We will see. But when's the last time you sat on the floor, opened up all your cans of paint and just had fun with it? Just have fun. There's no rules in painting. You can paint whatever you like to paint. And today, I just wanna paint a bunch of texture to really look pretty with that panel with that really gorgeous panel like all of these colors in here are beautiful to me that is gorgeous it's going to be so nice all right so i'm going to keep this brush for the lights i'm going to go with a separate brush for the pink so i'm going to jump into the tea rose now and just start to put a little bit of that tea rose in the corners i don't want this piece to be pink y'all i don't want i don't want a whole pink piece but i do think that little peaks of pink in the corners and then adding a bit of that green with everglaze will be nice so i'm going to keep this brush a little bit separate separate for the pink because you know how pink goes pink always travels around um, and i don't want it to travel too much and i'm also keeping the original hardware fyi girl on a budget use the budget hardware that's already on here once you paint it it's gonna look like a million bucks all right, I'm gonna put a rag down on the floor so I don't make a giant mess. And I'm gonna go back to the moonbeam, again with the Terra. And let's just kind of texture my paint in there and see what happens. I feel like this cabinet is like a really good size for maybe a bathroom or a corner, but it definitely has a shelf in there with that really pretty Ever Everglades. And I think that it would be really cute. So I don't want it to be too pink. I just want like touches of pink and yellow. I'm gonna bring you in even closer so you can see exactly what I am up to down here. And then you might be able to see the colors a little bit closer. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Connie. So can you see now how these colors are just kind of blending together, gently touching them on? I'm gonna keep going in between the wheat, which is that little bit of yellow. I like that with the pink. That looks really pretty with the tea rose. Also, I'm mixing these color lines, Terra and Chalk Mineral Paint together. There's no rules in painting. You can do whatever you like. So just dabbing on that color around the edge and kind of deciding what I like. Do you like the yellow bit of this more than you like the muddy white? Which do you prefer? Looking at it now and looking at it with the paper, like I feel like I kind of like the yellow and I'm digging the yellow and pink versus the white and the pink. Hmm. Let's just keep going. Let's just keep going. We'll push through. You all know I like to talk to myself and talk to you <laughs> as I move along, as I'm going with my project. Almost like a little bit of a soft watercolor. Let's see what we can do with adding a little bit more of that dark in. This is the cobblestone. I just want to kind of put it in the corners dirt it up some. Let's put that in the corners and see what happens if I like that better. I don't mind that, but I still like the yellow better. This is cuter to me than this. And let's see what happens if I added a little bit of that Everglades, which is like the green that's on the inside. See, the green looks better, I think, with the pink and the yellow than it does the cobblestone. 
I do. I think that it might be. Connie says she likes a little bit of the white too. Yeah, you know, and this is just this is just the start. I can always dip back into the white and go over top of what's there and just kind of dull it a little bit. Because like I said, I don't want this piece to be the star of the show. I want the, the paper to be the star of the show. I want those beautiful flowers. I could actually even get in here afterwards and add um, some of that beautiful green, that evergreen. You can kind of call it evergreen and it's not evergreen, it's everglades. <laughs> I grabbed my tester color. This is from the new silk line color, the, the new national silk, um, national park palette. And I grabbed my tester versus the actual jar so it doesn't have the label on it. So I gotta remember to start saying everglades. I'll turn the label with the yellow sticky note on it over. So this is cute. This is cute. I could do a little bit of a dry brush over top once I get all of these colors down with that white. That's cute. So maybe less pink, more of this kind of yellow tone with a dry brush of white over top because I'm, I'm liking that look. So today's project is get out all the things and play with your paint. There's no rules in painting. Paint what makes your heart happy. It's just paint and play with it and see what you want to design. I like that. So I think that's the plan. Lay this color palette down and then even use that white over top in Moonbeam to dry brush on top and add in a little bit more of that lightness of the value. But this is cute, this is cute, I'm liking this. I keep touching this panel before it's dry, I don't wanna ruin it. I like that with that, I like the yellow with that pops of pink. Let's go back into the pink brush and see what happens if we just add a little bit more in certain spots. It's turning out to be a very girly cabinet with roses and pink and <laughs> yellow. We're getting pretty girly over here. It's not normal for me. I'm usually not that, uh, not that girly when it comes to my furniture. I'm having a feminine moment, I guess. Yeah, it's almost like a color wash underneath. So then what I'll do is once I get this dry, I'll hit it with a bigger brush and just drag white over top. I think that that plan works for me. I think I like it. Let's continue on that pattern. I can't tell you the last time I painted in pink. It's been a hot minute for the pink to come out of my closet, that's for sure. It's almost peachy. I guess I did do a piece about a month ago with pink on it, but that was more apricot than it was real pink. If you hear any noise in the background, I do have some workers here today working on my deck space, getting ready for spring, fixing it up so we don't fall through the boards on the deck. You know, the important stuff in life, making sure to keep my, <laughs> me and my family safe. The, the deck is kind of old. The deck is like the last thing that we really have to do in this house since we moved in. Um, but the deck is giant. And because the deck is giant, I really don't want to replace the whole thing. So the workers are out there today fixing the boards, getting it ready for use versus rather like the prettiest deck in the world, right? At least we can use it and get out there. So you might hear some noise in the background. I think they're power washing it right now. So I need to add a little bit more pink up in here. Just a touch in the corners. I'm not, uh, not adding a ton. This is tea rose, just dibbly dabbling it into the corners. I wish the drawers did come out, to be honest with you. It would make my life a little bit easier. But they do not. They do not. This is cute. This is cute. I'm liking this. So I'm mixing, like I said, if you're hopping on a little bit late, I'm mixing terra clay paint along with Dixie Belle's chalk mineral paint 
to create a kind of textured effect on this little laminate cabinet that was prepared with bonding balls. Okay, I'm seeing this, I'm liking this, but I want green. Let's get in here and add some green to this. What are we gonna do? I'm gonna get out the separate brush. We're gonna dip back into the Everglades because I really want the same color that I had on the inside. So let's think about if you were green, where would you go? You would probably go up here in these corners. I'm gonna dab it off on my rag a little bit so that I'm not gonna overpower it. I do like unexpected colors together, like pink and green. I, I do like when I throw it on a little bit of a, a loop, right? It doesn't have to be exactly super soft and pretty all the time. It can be a little bit crazy along with the pretty. Yes, yes, I like that. It's almost like it's giving it like moss. I'm getting moss from this. That's really pretty actually. Now you know what's gonna happen. The next time you see this thing, it'll be completely green. And I'll be like, I don't know what happened. My paintbrush just took over and green went everywhere. <laughs> it could happen. It's okay. So let's add a little bit onto these handles. But if I'm gonna be dry brushing it anyways with a little bit of white after I'm done, it's okay if some of the sections have a little bit more color because you can tone it down with a dry brush. So I'm gonna come up here on the corners. Because if I had my way, I would like pretend that this is like from a fairy world of moss and craziness and I'd get out the brown wax and we'd add all the things. I'm trying to keep it a little bit more basic, but I sometimes I just can't. Sometimes my brain just runs away with me. <laughs> And I get these little ideas in my head. I'm like, oh, let's actually change it all and make it look like it was pulled from a swamp or the bottom of the ocean. You know, you know, the fans love to get at me for painting wild and crazy things. Let's add a little bit more of that yellow down here. Cute, very soft, very pretty looking. How are we feeling about this? Do you think that this is nice? Patty says basic is boring. You're not wrong, Patty. You're not wrong. Let's not be boring. Let's be exciting with our work. I like that. I like this. Okay, so let's hit it with the heat gun and then see what happens if we drag a little bit of white over top as a, just kind of a wash, just to see how it's gonna hit all those little peaks and valleys and change it up some. All right, so I have a separate brush here on the floor. This one doesn't have anything on it. Let's do this. Let's get it a little wet. Question is, do I use fluff or do I use Moonbeam? I'm drawn to the Terra, I usually am. So I'm just gonna take Moonbeam, which is like the white Terra, and I'm gonna blot it off, okay? Because I don't want a ton on this brush. Let's see what happens if we start to... See that? That's what I'm talking about. See how it's like just gently washing all of the raised bits with white, just gently dulling all of the color that I put down. I like that. It's just softening. It's just softening what I did. It's just softening the edges. So I took it from this, which is re really pretty. I do like this, but it, it just dulled it a little bit. It still is a lot of white. Let's see, Carol says, you like the green, but it's still a lot of white. And you all know that I normally don't do white. But like I said, the star of the show, I really want to be that paper. So this is just gonna be like the container for the paper. <laughs> it's just gonna be the, the vessel to hold that paper. Yeah, you guys, I kind of like this. I know that you normally don't see me do like a wash, especially of white, but we're changing it up. You can't fence me in over here. We're gonna make this really, really pretty. So now it looks almost like a, a watercolor underneath with a white over top. I do like this. And imagine if I touch all the edges with gold gilding wax, that would be very, very pretty. Very, very pretty. Let me show you the paper one more time up against what we got going on here and maybe it'll explain my vision to you just a little bit more. Can you see how you're going to see those pools of yellow because of the paper has those pools 
of green and yellow in it. I think that that is the process. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna lay the color down, we're gonna wash it with white, and we're gonna say, you're done, call it a day. Put my little panels in the doors at the top, and I think that this little cabinet will be super duper cute. Very country, very farmhouse, very not top drawer RVA, but still, still pretty, still pretty. And when you open it up, you're gonna see that beautiful pop of Everglades on the inside because it is really pretty and green in there. Isn't that cute? It'll be like the perfect little bathroom cabinet accessory. What do you think? Super cute, right? Adorable, perfect. All right, well then I am going to continue off my process and I'll let you all go. Stay tuned. What I'll do is make a video of all of this for you so that you two can uh, see the entire process from start to finish. I will put it up on my YouTube so that everybody can follow along. But I think that this is going to be, this will be the plan. I'm going to shut this door so I don't get paint in there because you know I just spent like all day yesterday painting the inside of that cabinet, which was super annoying. <laughs> I'm just going to keep brushing the white on until I get the exact shade that I want. And then I'm gonna come back in with my gold gilding wax and touch all the edges with gold. I think that this will be a really, really pretty, soft, muted piece. We'll keep building those layers. I hope everybody had fun today. Thanks for coming and hanging out and playing with some paint. Stay tuned. I will be back next week with a brand new project with lots of new stuff. I always like to find new things to paint and you can come along for the ride as well. Take care, everybody. You have a fabulous day. Bye-bye. So to continue this project, I used the rest of the decoupage paper on the other panel. Once those two panels were finished, I adhered them to the cabinet with glue. So these are the two panels that you saw in the video. I had previously painted them to get them ready for the decoupage. So here we go, putting on the paper. Remember to spray the back and then use your Terra Seal to apply. I did the same process to the sides of this piece and added that Terra Clay paint with that little bit of tea rose. And then that's where things went a little sideways. I ended up adding a ton of the beautiful Everglades to the piece to make it look like moss. I stippled it on, I dragged it on, I ended up touching almost the entire piece with that beautiful green color. I then came in with some wax and some Dixie Dirt. I used Dixie Dirt in a beautiful earth tone to really get into the edges and push that brown around. I want this piece to look more aged than it was looking. It was a little bit too clean for me. You can apply your Dixie Dirt with your Easy Peasy Spray Wax and just stipple that on. Once it's on there, you can seal the entire piece, again, with clear coat or wax. It's up to you. You can really see that beautiful bounce of green off of all of the edges and all of the corners. I then just glued back in those two panels and once they were dry, I was finished. I hope that you enjoyed this little green cabinet makeover. It's very gardeny, it's very mossy. I touched all the edges with a little bit of gold gilding wax, of course, but you can really see that beautiful texture come into play when you use terra clay paint on your projects. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and come back next week for a brand new project. You can find me across all social media at the Top Drawer RVA.